up, Annie. Anyway, I know you're quite clear up to that point. After that, I should turn to the left and make your own way to the main street. Then you can take any of those turnings to the right that'll bring you out of the back of Northumberland Street post office. Then drive straight across the parade ground and make for the north side of the park. Well, how is it, Johnny? Fine. The orders haven't been changed. We can go ahead. The weather's good. It'll snow later on, but we'll be back before that. I've been telling the others, Dennis, we'll go the way we planned. Across Queen's Bridge, down the main street, Bedford Street, coming to Shaftesbury Square. It's a bit longer, but it brings the car into a better position, facing the broad end of the street. There's no hurry. It's time for a cup of tea. Is the car all right? She's okay. Is it a nice, clean one? Hope you got decent tires on her. Uh, I picked out a good one. One of these days, you might have a car of your own. <laughs> I never know now. Wouldn't mind having this one. How much petrol? Three gallons. Half of us. You never know. We might have to. Not at all. We'll be back here by five. Well, I'll have the car out where we said at 20 minutes to. I'll be on the bridge. I'll be at the car sales room. Got some tea, Granny. Everything settled. Yes, we'll have to hurry. They're leaving soon. I, I heard that. You hear everything, don't you? Well, what I don't hear, I can put together. Pour in the lift now. Will he be coming back again, my darling? Ah, uh, sure, I helped to bring you into the world, and I've watched you grow up. And I know what's in your heart for that boy up there. Maybe you know what's in his heart, too. Oh. Did you send me coupons for me? Oh, there's no time to talk about that now. Ah, oh, for your impudence now, the price has gone up. I want three bob a piece for the clothing ones. You can have the meat ones thrown in if you'll just give me a few points for me sweets. We're three district managers coming to make a weekly report. Friday's always their day. What do district managers talk about? Oh. <laughs> Goods, goods on order, export market. You work it out. Well, I'll be along there, Johnny. I'll be where we said with the prom. There's nothing changed. No, we'll be there on time, Maureen. When we give you the money, you're to take it to Hannigan's, you know. He'll distribute it over the weekend. Aye, right, right. After this, you won't need to worry until your man comes out of prison. A slice of the party cake? A few crumbs of that won't go amiss. Well, good luck. Good luck. Good luck, Maureen. Well, we'd better be moving, too. I hear, hold hard for a second. I shall wait here for you till you come back. Nolan. Oh. Murphy, you've got to look like businessmen, you know. I wouldn't wear that if I were you. It's all right, I've got my coat. Go easy with those now. Well, anybody that asks for it can have it. Yes, but don't, uh, don't encourage them to ask. You haven't been mixed up in shootings before. You don't want to start now. Okay. See you later. Uh -huh. Sure, I'm not. Good luck, boys. Good luck, Bye-bye. Your... Your heart's not in this job, Johnny. Is it? We'll be sorry when we're back. You don't believe in it, then? I believe in everything we're trying to do. But this violence isn't getting us anywhere. You? We're sentenced to 17 years imprisonment for bringing guns and ammunition to the dumps. You talk about violence. In prison, you have time to think. If only we could throw the guns away, make our cause in the parliaments instead of in the back streets. Look, Johnny, I've been in this house for six months since your escape from prison. It isn't the right kind of training for a job like this. You were in prison for eight months before that. That's over a year since you were able to get out and show your face in the streets. You're not fit to go right out on a job like this. Let me go. Let him go, Johnny. Do I look soft, then? Well, the men have noticed something. You've changed lately. They want me to go in your place. Don't they trust me? They trust you, all right, but... Dennis, I'm the leader of the organization in this city. I've spent months planning this raid to get the funds for all the things we need, for Maureen and her husband and the others. I've got my orders and I'll see them through. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. All right. 
our way downstairs. You haven't drunk your tea, Johnny. Now, don't you start worrying about this business, Kathleen. It'll go fine. Thanks. Here. Johnny, you haven't told me if you're remaining here after the job's done. I'll be back for a while. But when the excitement ends, I'll make for the hills. There are friends up there. Shall I come and see you? Of course. Bring Granny. You know, you've been a great friend. Both of you. Putting up with me the way you have what I've been hiding here. You've been very... Well, you know what I mean. Johnny, will you ever be free? Someday, perhaps. I must go now. like a businessman. Now, don't worry, Catherine. We'll be back in no time. Johnny, you've been stuck in this house for six months. You're not fit for it. Let Dennis go instead. Will you be here when you come back? Jamison, seven. All right, you can lay off your work for a few minutes. Back up there. Back up. Sit down, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Shh, put your hands down.
Have you not got these in yet? him over. He's dead. Uh, get out the pair of you. You told me to hold the car now. You just sit there. Go on, man. Will you reverse? Reverse! I wonder who we turn and go back from. He'll cut down that street there and be waiting for us at the top of the next. No, let's take a chance to run back and look for him. We'll pick him up at the next corner. Drive on, Pat. Yeah, he'll be there ahead of us. Make you see now. Pat! Look, I'm not going to stay on here. It's too blooming risky. You'd only back the car, Pat. Here's the street now. Keep a look out for him. Can you see him? No, he's not there. Get going. He'll make it all right. You take the straight cut to Kathleen's house. He'll get there. <laughs> Johnny, do you see? Um, well, they must have let go of him somehow, because when I looked around, seen poor Johnny lying in the middle of the road, and I, I was just going to back the car, do you see, but before I could do a blooming thing, he was up and away down the street. Why did you let go of Johnny? Sure, he's... Who said we let go? Well, can you deny it? I took his by the cold cart right enough, didn't I? And that was no easy thing, neither. And then, you see, when I made the turn... You took it too quickly! Uh, there was no need for such speed. And who let go of him? We told you to slow down so we could get him into the car. I saw it. did slow down. Then I mean, it was too late. Ah, I wish. Or only for you, fellas. There wouldn't have been no need for me to slow down. Johnny was wounded. And at the turn, the car door gave Johnny's left arm a terrible crack and he shrieked and let go. You mean you let go? And what's to do then? Go on, tell Dennis all about that. Yes, we saw Johnny lying in the crown of the road and we kept telling you to stop. Uh, yeah, you drove on. You went down for near a hundred yards. Yes, you did. Oh, they'll let them tell you what they did. 
So before we could get out, Johnny got up and cut down a turning. That's a lie, Sortez. She used fellas wouldn't stir out of the car. And they give enough oh, to meet the enough. whole... Give us the facts and stop well, arguing. Where's Johnny? What's happened? Well, that's the whole of it for you now. They kept on shouting at me to pull up the car, and so I did pull up the car. And they wouldn't get out for him. Do you mean to say the three of you has come back here without Johnny? I'm handling this. Without your chief? Ah, don't you be giving out of you. So what do you know about it? You weren't in the blooming car, were you? Look at them. Their own chief, and they left him in the lurch. Ah, for heaven's sake, leave us alone. We've done the best we could. There's a wonder you wouldn't give us a drink or something. Give me the facts quickly. Maureen, bring us some tea. You drink your tea, is it? And dose of poison. an outing. I dreamt I'd escaped from prison. I dreamt I was on a raid, robbing a mill, funds for the organization. I remember I wasn't feeling so good. I hadn't felt so good ever since I'd escaped from here. After we'd done the job, there was a fight, and I shot a man. Yes, I dreamt I shot him. And I couldn't get onto the car. Somehow I couldn't get onto it. That's right, I was wounded in the left arm. I fell off and got up and ran along streets, afraid, afraid I'd kill them. And then I came to an air raid shelter, slumped down. Must have passed out. Finish it off right, did we? Oh, that's poor thanks, anyhow. I'd have thanked you for a hard night's work. Kathleen, will you get some bandages and things? We did our best. Oh, what's the bandages for? I'm going down to look for Johnny. If bandage on, they may take me for him. Well, should, should the police will be out in our hunters, man. You wouldn't stand a chance. Armed raid on mill. Cashier killed in desperate struggle. Wounded assailant still at large. Killed. Poor Johnny. May heaven protect him. Listen, Pat. Nolan, and you, Murphy, get to headquarters at once. And go the back way. Dennis, can I go with you? No. Go to headquarters and tell them where I'm going so they can take action. Oh, right, Charles. So. Good luck. Do you think this will deceive them, Dennis? If the police are around, they'll be looking for a man with a wounded arm. There's a chance they may take me for Johnny. I'll give them a run and lose them. That'll give Johnny a chance to get away. By yourself? They don't know he's down there. They don't know he fell off the car. Too many would attract attention. For a long time now, there's been no serious trouble. But tonight, the police will be everywhere. Take a few of the men with you. No, it's better this way. Take with you somebody you can trust. Come on, finish it. Dennis, let me come with you. Why? Something I want to do. Something you want to do for yourself and not the organization. Sooner or later, the police will get him. Let me have him until then. As long as he lives, he'll belong to the organization. 
Always the organization. Yes. Wait here in case he gets back before me. Where's Granny? Stay here. See your identity card, please. Uh, thank you, now. Identity card. Teresa's? Still a little bit trouble if we go there. Ah, yeah. Well, it's a place for us to go till the road's clear, isn't it? So what else are we to do? Aren't we going to head for Ah, do you hear? Go on, you and try. Ah, come on, come on. Look, Pat, we're in trouble enough without asking for more. Now, for heaven's sake, man, shall she give us a drink of something, won't she? And a bite to eat, too, maybe. Oh, I don't know. She's tricky. I wouldn't trust her. Ah, no, she wouldn't trust nobody. Don't you worry. Steps, like at the mill. Yeah, you keep your mouth shut about that, do you hear me? Yeah. Just keep your mouth shut. Ah, oh, Teresa, how are you? Ah, darling, and Murphy and Nolan, come in. Give me your coats and hats. Come into the barn and let me see you. I'm away to my mother's, Pat. Sorry, Teresa, I can't stay. Over here. Oh, he was in a terrible hurry. Ah, she, you know, Teresa, we, we just dropped in for a minute. But you're not thinking of leaving me without having a drink first. Give me your coat, it is barely six o'clock, and there's plenty of time now for something to eat, and the... Ah, oh, for your own peace of mind now, you better keep these handy. Come on into the warm and rest yourself. <laughs> Come on. You'd better not get me 
next stop in this. came rushing out at us. He was shooting. He got Johnny in the left shoulder. We dragged him onto the running board, but he, he fell off before we really got started. Aye. And wasn't I saying to Dennis the whole time how Johnny wouldn't be fit for it? And Johnny? Have they found poor Johnny, tell me? Did the policeman find him, or is he safe with friends? Oh, he's safe enough. Somebody will get him out of it. And is he still down near the mill? Aye. Should Dennis be able to get a hold of him somehow? Dennis, is it? There's no better man for a job like this. Drink up, Pat, darling. Ah, it's good stuff right enough. I'm sure all they'd give us was tea. Imagine tea. Where was that? Kathleen's house. A little music now will help to cheer you. I won't be five minutes in getting the meal ready, and then we put our feet onto the table and sit easy. Hey, I wonder what else we tell her. Well, whatever she knows now, because you told her. You told all about Dennis going down to try and get Johnny out. Oh, for heaven's sake, man, will you pipe down? Leave a fella take a drink in peace. Get out. Police headquarters. Inspector, this is Trace O'Brien speaking. Well, I know, Teresa. I can know a bad sixpence. It's right as rain. Plenty of dough, too. Here. Oh. Well, have a smoke. Go oh, on, she's on the house. Oh, and I. Of course, as people says queer things about her sometimes, they say queer things about me, too. Jealous, you know. Ah, she's the town's full of it. Wait till you see now. She laid down a right good feed for us fellas. And a wee spot of booze, too. She's nothing but an old chancer. Mixed up in every dirty wreck in the city. Smuggling and money lending. Squeezing the blood out of the poor. You know that. Is that so now? And you can sit there warming your... Maybe we shouldn't have come. We'll take what's here and what else is to come. Then we better be going. Aye, uh, sure. You're always saying I'm a bad one and again the law. But I'm, I'm proving to you now that I'm always willing to help the police. I know, I know there's a big reward for this, but I, I'm not thinking of that. These boys have told me the whereabouts Johnny is, and they're sending someone to look for him. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. Oh, I, I wouldn't like any trouble in this house, Inspector. I see. Well, in a, in a few moments, I'll... I'll do my best to get them out of here. Yes. Thanks. Somebody ringing a bell. What are you afraid of? You brought stop, us here. Stop, stop, listen. I'm off. I can stay where you are, don't be a fool. Ah, let her come in. Put away that thing, for heaven's sake, man. <laughs> You're a terrible man, there's no doubt about it. You do nothing with that, you have a load of booze inside you. You leave us a spoonful. Come on, put your coat on. Come on. If she starts any of her tricks, I make her pay for it. I'm telling you. Let her try. And when she comes in through the door, here's how. I give her a right good fright. Ha, no, no, no. Go easy. Ah, sure, sure. Listen, boys, I've just got word in the telephone. The police are heading this way. Go before the police surround the house and lift you. If you don't go at this minute, Things will go terrible bad for you. Oh, stop flourishing them things, me dear. Must I tell you what to do? Out you go now, bless you. Run for it. There are three steps. Ah! All right, you are, so come on. Oh, 
are they killed? I heard them running past me house, and then they were shooting. And now there they are. You said on the telephone they'd send someone to look for Johnny McQueen. Hmm? Where are they looking for him? Go inside, then I'll join you. seen them. All the police over the end of the street. Mister, give us a penny. There's no police here there. Sure, there's hundreds of them up there, looking for the fellow who killed the man at the mill. Give us a penny. But the phone called there. Did you see him? If you haven't got a penny, give us a cigarette. But they were here, weren't they? They were, but they all went back again. You sure? Quite sure. Mister, give us a penny. Did they uh, find the man who killed the fellow at the mill? No, they'll never find John. He escaped in the car. Mister, give us a penny. You sure they didn't find the man who killed the fellow at the mill? Quite sure. Do you know where Johnny is? No, we don't know. Did you see him? Did you? The man? Where was he? In a house. In a shelter. But which one? Show me. Take me to it. Come on, be a good girl. Show me. Did the police come and take him away? Did he run away? And the police never came. <laughs> Did I kill that man? And you walk. Did I? And you stand up. down here. Listen, Johnny. I'll cut out to the left and draw them off that way. When you hear three shots and quick fire... And you're listening, Johnny. There's no time. When you hear three shots and quick fire, go out to the right and make for the house. It's a long way, Dennis. Johnny, it's our only chance. You'll get through. I'm away now, Johnny. Stand near the door here. Wait for three shots. Your coast will be clear and then be off. Good luck. 
Dennis, did I kill that fellow? Please. How are you, Mr. McCluskey? How are they all? What's holding us up, Bill? What's holding us up? The car's overloaded. Chuck that bunch at the platform, Ernie. Take your face outside. And go back to your fields and things. Some of you can get out and push. Come on, clear the platform or let's settle down for the night on the rails. I brought something hot for you. Here's the police. Earth in out the ranks. Come on in and warm yourself, constable. Come on, get up the car. We'd better get the ambulance for him. Leave me, I'd be all right. But will you come indoors? We know all about first aid. We were in the ARP. We've got bandages and everything. Can you come in? Maury, I've got your umbrella. His arm's broken. Don't be so dramatic. Remember what the book said. Keep calm. Get your basin and a kettle of water. 
It was boiled for tea, so it's sterilised. His arm's broke down, Now, you? look here, who did the first aid, you or me? I did all the ARP, same as you did, and I'm telling you his arm's broke. You know down well you failed in your practicals, so get the boiling water and the first aid box. You'll see as soon as you take his coat off, you'll see. Oh, my goodness. Can I stay here? It's quiet. Maudie. This fellow's badly hurt. I told you so, his arm's broken. Maudie. Oh. Help me off with his coat. Can you? That's right. There now. Sit down. Give me the scissors. What are you gonna do? Cut me a good jacket like that. You shouldn't do that without asking him. It's the way they told us up at the town hall. Maybe, but whose jacket is it? The troubles you make. I'm only warning you that it's his jacket. Look at your hands. What's wrong? Germs. Go and wash them. Oh, fuss, fuss, fuss. Anyway, they told us at those lectures that the air was full of germs. Can you sit up? I want to take your coat. Maudie. You see to it. Don't bring a doctor. I shouldn't like to interfere with that. We'll have to get him to the hospital. Of course. Look at him. Help me up. No, just lay quiet. We'll bring a doctor to you, son. No, help me. No, up. no, just lay easy. Rest. I must be on my way back. I can't stay here. They're waiting for me. Get a glass of water. Now listen, son. You've been badly hurt by that lorry. I'll assemble the doctor in the ambulance. No, don't do that. And there's a someone we can fetch to help you. Your wife, maybe. Or a friend. If you send to her, she might. If she could, she would. Is it your wife, son? <sighs> Who, then? Some friends. Well, where do they live? I'll send Maudy for them. We're new to this town, but we'll find them somehow. I'll just slip on my coat. Where do they live? What's the address? I can't bring them out tonight. Why should I be the one to bring you in? And what will my husband say when he sees you? Give us a hand up from this couch and I'll go. Stay there. What will I do with you? Said in the papers that he was wounded and got away. You're right, it's him. Chief of the organization. Did that fellow die? Did I kill him? Rosie, what will we do with him? I can't hand him over to the police. Not as he is. Lying there near dead. And what can I, Rosie? There's a reward out for that fella. A thousand pounds. I wouldn't lay a finger on it. No more would I, Rosie. There's Tom. What'll Tom do? Tom will do his duty. He'll go to the police. 
not thinking of the reward or anything, but sort of putting himself in the way of getting it. No, Rosie. A bit late tonight. Got stopped by the police at the end of the road. This mill business. Tom. There's something I... We found this fellow outside. What's happened to him? Come here. I'll tell you. Listen, Tom. We've just been out for a few minutes, getting the rations. Who is that fella? That's Johnny McQueen, the man the police are looking for. I know, Tom. Well, you can take him, put it back where you fetched him. We can't do that, Tom. Him lying in our parlor. How did he get here? He was laying on the road. What's it matter? He's here, isn't he? And did any of the neighbors see him no. coming here? Are you sure about that? Quite sure. Rosie, do you realize who he is? That's the chief of the organization. The police are out in hundreds looking for it's him. It's what he is now that I'm thinking about. Aye, and I'm thinking about the decent man he killed. I have no pity for those fellows shooting a police in the dark, murdering an innocent men at their work. But he's dying now, Tom. Let me send Maudie for some of his friends. His friends? What are you, mad? How could we get them through the police court? You wouldn't treat a dying dog the way you're asking me to treat a him. A dog is a friend of man, Rosie. Are those fellows out I don't know, Tom. Maybe not. He's not long with this world, and I don't like to be hard on him. Call the police. They're not sent for the doctor and get the fella taken to hospital. Not letting a dying man have a bit of peace seems hard. It's sense. Sense is cruel sometimes. I respect the law. Rosie, I know what the men in my shed would say. I tell you, there's a police cordon round here. We'll be in it, too. All right, then. Put him out. You're the master here. Shh. Everything is settled for you, and you won't have to worry. What are you going to do? Open the door, and I'll go out and never trouble you again. Yeah, hold on a minute. Chum, want to get in? There's no driver. Come on, Harry, drop off, Chum. No, no, I think the chance has us, honey. God, he's tight. Tight? Oh, yeah? Let's have a sniff. Oh, lovely. You're right, he's had a drop. Drop, fuck it, fool. Ask him where he got it. <laughs> Where'd you get it, mate, eh? That all right, mate? OK. Let's go, no, there's our tram. Cards. Why, what's the matter? That chap trying to get out of the town. Well, don't blame him. I've been trying to get out for five years, man. You're not caught him yet. Not yet. 
think he's out of the district. Who have you got in the back? In the back? <laughs> Johnny. All right, Jen. On your way, on your way. Get on with it. Get up. Penis. Sit down. I'm going to knock on the door, let him in, but don't talk. Like some poor old creature that hasn't got a bit of spirit left in her. Sure, I see the time when I could hold a dozen of them with me eloquence. Now give him a taste of silence instead. There's a gun upstairs. I'd better get rid of it. We've orders to search the house. Well, come in and get on with it. Here. Who occupies this room? My father. Wait downstairs. Ah, sure, it's a fine, brave sight, you are, James. They'll never think of searching me. My father's out. I wasn't asking you about your father. Come on, come on, I know they've been here. Smoking cigarettes and drinking tea, the whole bunch of them. I had friends in to see me. The fellows who raided the mill. You were all wondering how you could find Johnny McQueen. about Johnny. I can tell you nothing. You were making plans how you could find him. That's the truth now, isn't it? What do you want in this house? He has gone too far this time for any of you to help him. Finish your work here and get out and leave us in peace. We're not after him for taking a shot at us or for blowing out the windows of a police barracks with explosives. This time, he has shot and killed a man. You know what that means. It's his concern. And yours. I'm not responsible for him. You're responsible for what goes on in this house. Now, I warn you, if there's any evidence found here, it will go very hard with you, unless you help us now. What do you want me to say? I want the truth, that's all. I want to know where Johnny is. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. There's nothing upstairs, yes? Take a look around here. Stand up, old girl. Give them to me. Them's my sweets. All right, you can sit down now. Whose coat is that you're wearing? Belongs to my father. He hasn't lived here for two years or more. Put it round me sometimes when I'm cold. Are you often cold? You shouldn't be with the crowd always in the house. These didn't help, Johnny. Oh, Dennis. All right, I'll join you later. I searched this house and found nothing. I found all that I came to find. The bandages and the jacket, is it? More than that. There was nothing more. There was. Something that you couldn't hide. 
I'm not afraid because of that. He belongs to the law now. It might be easier for you if you could bring yourself to realize that. If you don't, and you try to help him, you'll be in trouble. Stay out of this business. That wasn't a bad fella, as them fellas goes. He spoke fair. Give it to me, Granny. There was decency in him. He spoke sense. Give me the revolver. And what he said was true, darling. Let me have what I want. Ah, sure you'll never find Johnny. I've seen the men go out the same as he did, and I've seen the women take off to go and look for them, but they never found them. Stay here, darling. So where's the sense in you running towards trouble when you know you can't mend it? Look at me there. That was me on my wedding day. I was 19 then and as lovely as yourself. I had the fine looks the same as you have them now. I had the boys admiring me. There was Huey Fitzpatrick. He wanted to marry me, so he did. He was a rebel on the run and was never seen again. Did I go out to look for him? I did not. I stayed and had my life. And grand times I had, with Frankie and the rest of them saying I was an angel of God. Grand times, thanks be to God. And the voices of the fine boys singing the songs. And I'd eleven children, so I had fine boys and girls, all of them. Come, Frankie. Inside, Jack. You already got a fare. The man's drunk. I'll soon get the heads and tails of this. Come on, out you get it. Who are you? And did I drive you through the police court in my car? Carry on the way you're going. No, I can't, man. I can't. Listen, I'm not for you. I'm not against you. But I can't afford to get mixed up in this. Hey, you! Come on, get along there. Yeah, yes, Constable. Right away, Constable. Just in a moment. Listen, son, if you get back to your friends, you'll tell them I helped you, me, Jim Jimmy. But if the police get you, you won't mention my name, huh? I saw you, Jim. Is he hurt, Bob? You keep out of this shell. Get away out of it. Come on.
City. But if they don't get to him, will you help? Oh, it's an awful risk, Kathleen. What time do you say you'll be late? Soon after 11. But it's only 8 now. Yes, but where is he? Well, I'm going to Father Tom's. He might know something. Yes, he usually hears things. Now, listen. If you do find him, don't bring him the way you came. You won't get through. Bring him by Dock Square. I'll see that the gate at the foot of the clock tower is open. Good. I'll be here before 11. little walk, I suppose, no? Well, I'm glad you're keeping out of this business. place, Dad. I thought you might have stayed. You're wasting your time. Father Tom can't help you with a thing like this. You're going in, then? Yes. Why don't you go home? There you are. Go in if you want to. But you're too late, miss. Is Father Tom in? He is, but I think there's somebody with him still. Will you come in a moment? You came to ask me about Johnny McQueen. Do you know him, Father? I taught him as a child. I know them all. I was expecting people to come inquiring about him. I have another visitor, a poor man whose little bird is sick. we better hear what he's got to say first. Hmm? And this is my other visitor. His name is Shell. And you're... Kathleen Sullivan. Uh, how are you, miss? Shell is having trouble with his bird. Do you see this wee creature? He's a rare one. It's a budgie. There are thousands of them. But sure, there's millions of men and women. But there's rare ones among us. Like this bird. You know, this fella's a chief. Or a devil of a fella. Always making mischief. Just like uh, some fellas does. What's his name? Me and Lukey and Tober. Uh, them's the friends that I live with. The three of us, uh, we calls him Johnny. Of course, uh, I must tell you, Mr. Johnny is, well, he's what you'd call a menace to society. That's why me and Lukey and Tober, we has a rule saying that the door of his cage must be kept shut. Because there's other birds in my room besides Johnny, and he can't stand them, and they can't stand him. You know, there's a sort of a difference of opinion, like, between them. Hey, you hear that? The bird's almost human. How bad is he? 
I'll tell you. He, he gets out of his prison. Uh, his cage, I mean. And off he goes. But he's back now. You have him there. Tell us what happened when he got away. Murder. Do you, do you see his left wing? It's hurt. Oh, poor fella. Oh, sure he gets out and does mischief. Killing one fella in the struggle, but the, the one he killed contrived to sort of give him a dig. And there it is. The spot of blood. Now, did you manage to capture him again? Oh, oh I, I got word from a friend and got my hands on the bird. Oh. And he's hurt bad. How is he now? Well, uh, this corner that he's laying in, it's not the, not the sort of place for him to sit up proper. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he's not long for this world. There isn't a sound out of him. Mm. If he's as badly wounded as that, perhaps it'd be better to let nature take her course. Oh, now, Father Tom, I'd hate for to let the bird slip out of my grasp. Well, say, it's a hard world, Father. I don't mind telling you. And I want the bird because there's money in him. Ah, uh, my son, it's a hard world. A very hard world. Oh, it's fierce. Of course, I know there's praying and all that. But if I don't take what's coming to me as chances, I'm finished. I just starve. That's a fact. Mm-hmm, poor fellow. What will you do with him? Where is he? But should I've told you. I just uh, want to get him out of the corner and give him something to put him right. And after that? Uh, well, maybe you don't believe me, but I'm telling you there's lots of people that pay me a grand price for Johnny. The police? I'm not referring to them. I'm thinking of the friends that he must have. Where is he? Well, uh, don't blame him. He's got to live. But asking a price for him, not telling us where he is. But, but I've told you where he is. He's in the corner. If he knows where he is, we must trust him. Tell me now, what price are you asking for him? Well, I could, uh, I could get a thousand for him. <laughs> you foolish man. Money wouldn't make you happy. Well, I'm only telling you what I could raise on him if I had a mind to. Well, we'll get you a little something, but not a thousand pounds. Why all that money? It'd be a terrible burden. First of all, where is he? Go and bring him to us. That's what I was waiting to hear. But, of course, uh, Father, it won't be, uh, won't be an easy job, you know. No, but you'll try. Oh, I will, I will, I will. Mm. But you know, Father, I'm uh, still thinking and wondering uh, how much... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a poor man. I've got no money. Oh, well, that's bad. Oh, well, I should maybe the young lady here, she could lend you a bit. I'm uh, sure she couldn't. Oh, well, listen. Fella was telling me, I hear tell that uh, his reverence, the Pope, is queer and rich. <laughs> blather. Bl is that a fact? It is, just blather. Aye, well then, uh, how do you suggest that we should settle this matter decently? If you like, I try to inspire in you a precious particle of faith. Faith? Would it, um... Pay the rent for me and help me to get a pint of stout now and then. Shell, you and I are poor men. We must live the best we can. I've been poor longer than you have. Bring back Johnny, and I'll show you the way to get real riches. We'll talk about the way to live, and then there'll be a fine reward for you, Shell. It's uh, still the bit of faith. Now, but what is the value of it in hard cash? Trust me. Bring Johnny back, and we'll settle it all. Now, will you? Uh, I will. I will. Hey, oh, no, it's no, no, I'll, I'll bring him. You stay here. Well, my child. Father, when shall returns, give Johnny to me. Not for me to give him to anyone. Why are you having him brought here? Shell says he's wounded. Maybe dying. I want to hear his confession and do what I can to comfort his soul. And afterwards? I'll try to persuade him to give himself up. Father. What do you want me to do, child? 
That's just to take him back to the boys so that he kill more people and defy the authority. So that I can take him away from all of them and be with him. You will never hear of him again. I give you my word. But you couldn't hide him for long. I've done it before. Ah, this is different. He's killed a man and he must pay the penalty. Rather than that, I'd take his life myself. Child, you mustn't say such things. Why, Father? The law would do it for revenge. I only do it out of pity. Have you thought what had happened to you? I shall go with him. Kathleen, you don't know what you're saying. If he's arrested, I'll have to live while he's on trial, while he's been executed. And afterwards, for all the years of my life. Kathleen, there's a little glove somewhere for putting on the coals. Can you see it? Listen to me, Kathleen. When people are in deep trouble, they often say to me they'll kill themselves. And they mean it at the time. But when everything seems lost, God gives them the courage to win. It's not for myself that I'm afraid. Why then? I'm afraid for him if he should die alone. When men were against him, I protected him. If I go with him, perhaps I can protect him again. Listen to me, Kathleen. This life is nothing but a trial for the life to come. You're being tested now. And if you wish to get real happiness for Johnny and yourself, you will face your ordeal and win your own heaven. You're wise, Father. Good, I know. I want to listen to you, but I can't. I can't take it in. I only know that what I feel is stronger than my religion, stronger than myself. Kathleen, where's your faith? Faith is in my love. You have neither the power nor the right to do this thing. I believe that what I intend to do is good. Masha, open strange. Mr. Fancy, good yeah. quiet. Who is that fellow just come in? It's Johnny. Shh, get on the work. 
Mr. Fency, did Charlie chuck him out before this trouble here? And what do you think would happen to me if his friends found out? Eh? Well, well what did we do then? You carry on. Now, come on. Take this and get out of here. I need to stay and rest. I'll go in your clothes. You're not going to rest here. Come on. Get a hold of this. Oh, uh, wasting good stuff. Come on. Get out of here. Put yourself together. Should be through an apron over his head and run him out. No, no, no. Wait for closing time. Then get rid of him. Keep your eye on here. Say number four. again, Lukey. It's the eyes. But, but, Lukey, why don't you paint a nice jug and some apples like the other fellas? Uh, sit down, Sheldon. But, but, sit down. It'll only take a couple of minutes. But it's always a couple of minutes. Stretch into hours in this blasted chair. One day you'll die, Shell, but this... this picture will live. Lukey, Lukey, I have important business matters. Lukey. I know where Johnny McQueen is hiding. I know where I can lay hands on him. And Lukey, he's hurt bad. He can't move. What's that you say? And I, I, I went to Father Tom, and him and me agreed on terms. Uh, nothing definite, no promises. But you know, a rich thing, a particle of something very precious. What have you been up to, you sneaking little rat? But, but Lukey, dear, shoot us hundreds of police out to get Johnny. And where was the wrong in me diddling him out of harm and putting him clean into the gentle palm of the hand of mercy? You... Ah, Lukey, I only ask Father Stop. killing a human being. But, but, eh? but, oh, now, Lukey, <laughs> Lukey, he goes to the right buyer. Oh, and how much did he offer? There was no exact figure, uh, mention. How much? The negotiations was left open for further Liar. I'm going to hit you hard for trying to sell a man who's on the run. Now, Lukey, don't. Now, look, I know where Johnny is at this minute. Let me just whisk him over to Father Tom. I'm going to hit you hard unless... Unless what? Unless you bring him here for me to paint. Look, that's a desperate thing you're asking me to do. What about his friends? I want to know. Him. Afterwards, you can do what you oh, like but with look, him. Look, you'll do what I tell you. It'll take too long. Just the hidden shoulders. You see, Shell, dear, there'll be something, something in his eyes. Something more than... But all my failures have. Yeah, Lukey, I don't know. Don't you? I, then I'll break your little I, I, neck I, I, and lock you in your room. Let go of me now while well, well, I think. Yes uh, or no? Let me, but I want to think over my plans. I forget my fear. Yes or no? Well, well, yes, yes, yes. But if you Lukey. don't bring him here, I'll hit you hard where it hurts. Yes. But if you do bring him here, then I may. I may find some good in you after all. Now, look, I'll have everything ready. You do. Shell! I, I, I'm not running any risks for the fun of putting up models for you, me boy. Uh, 
their faces in the fire, Lukey? Hundreds of them, Taylor. Beautiful ones, ugly ones, smiling, glaring at me. Men and women, one after another, telling me things, shedding tears. But they don't stay. Oh, Toby, dear, if I could only get just one of them. Go and get yourself a drink, Lukey. Thank you, Taylor. Have a drink. How's business? <sighs> My best bird has flew. Too bad, too bad. Aye, aye. I'm looking for him. And what sort of bird is he? Mr. Fancy, he's hurted. In, uh, in the left wing. Do you think you'll find him in the dark on a wild night like this? I'm halfway to him already. Is that so? Oh, I know rightly where he is at this minute. Why didn't you catch him then? No hurry. No hurry. He's in a corner. Can't get out. What would you do with him if you had him in your fist? Sure, I'd sell him. He, he's a prize creature. Wounded or sound. Suppose now, just suppose like, you didn't find him at all. What would you do then? I'd go to the police, Mr. Fancy. I see. I wish you luck. Would you uh, give me a hand to get him away? Wait here a minute. Look out. Large whiskey inside. Hello, Lukey. How's the art? Still making the paint fly? Ah, listen to them all. Yap, yap, yap. All about a man who committed a murder. The police want him. But you're all afraid of him and of his friends, but I'm not. I'd face him and then I'd look into his eyes. Well, what would you do after that, Lukey? I'd paint him. And it'd all be there, the truth of life and death. Like those Popeyes of yours up there. Ah, that muck. Uh, beer money. <laughs> What 
That's all right. Put it on my account. Oh, no. I suppose you must be feeling just a little bit tired after all your exertions. Well, the damage will amount to about 25 quid, I should think. Come on. What suggestions have you got to offer? I have no money. No. No money, but plenty of talent for smashing up the place. Well, there's no more to be said. It's the police for you this time, Luki. On the last occasion when you and your friends suffered a small artistic difference, I forgave you. This time it's a little more serious. I must send for the police. 25 pounds. My dear fellow, I'm a painter, not a public. Pay up or go to prison. Well, I'm afraid I'm a little pinched financially at the moment. Then it's six months in jug for you. All right. Have your revenge. Now, I've got a proposition to make. Yes, of course. A couple of my pictures. Now, that will square everything. No, it? a better alternative. Oh, so what is it? You'll soon see. The police are my proposition. Make up your mind. Well, I'm afraid I'm too busy at the moment to take a six months holiday in prison. Then it is my proposition? Yes. Joe, go and tell Bill to bring his cab here. Come over here. <laughs> Sam, give us a hand with number one. See what a pretty picture you've painted. Well, he's going to make good that mischief. But it's Johnny. Yes, it's him, all right. How are you? I've ordered a cab for you, and the fellow who drives it won't ask any questions. What do you want me to do with him? Get rid of him. Tip him out somewhere in the dark, away from here. Here's ten bump for the cab. Now, make up your mind. Now, get him out of here. Sam, give us a hand. It'll be ten years if we're caught. And watch that arm. He's for the road. There's only one road for him, whichever way he goes. Wait here. The street's empty. The cab is here. My bottles. My beer. Outside. See if anything about it. What, Mr. Bates? Yeah. If the police see Shut us, up. Then open that door. Thank you. Lukey. Come on, outside. All right, all right, all right. Come on, come on. Don't you think you ought to have a little brandy for the journey? Outside, go on, go on, go on. Come on. Go on, get him in there. Go on. Right, be careful with him now. Be come careful. on, then, give us a hand. Go on, get in. Now be out. All right, take it away. Stop! Have you no manners? Go on. When I get you home, I'll give you a drink. And a friend of mine, he'll fix your arm for you. Tober. 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 Tober, is, is this serious? Huh? When you were a student at that university in London, you learned about things like this. Look, Tober. Look how I, how I hurt the lad, huh? No. I, I, I thought I might have been.
Fish and chips, huh? Good, good nourishing food, Tober. Near one for poor Shell. Lord, I, I, I'm desperate hungry. You're a decent man, Tober. Tober. Tober, a bad thing has happened. You won't be cross like will you if I tell you? So you won't, will you? Lukey was terrible cross. Well? Well, I, 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 I found where Johnny McQueen was hiding. Go on. And I... We took and I went to Father Tom. To get your dirty bit of profit. You should I have to live? So you are foul. Oh, well, Father Tom never said so. He was decent, like. I just told him that I had to live, and he sort of agreed with me. Of course, he has he has no fortune or anything, but he sort of hinted he had something else. It's fate, precious particle, something he is by him. That's where I've lost. It might have glorified your miserable bit of soul. Tober, what does it mean, faith? Only one man had it. I wonder how, how old Father Tom would have given me a bit of it. But what is it, Tober? It's life. I got him. It's Johnny. Put him over there by the fire. Oh, no. some water quickly. Clean out a bowl and bring it here, and a piece of carbolic soap. Bring that case from my room. I know. All them silver scissors. Yes. What's this you're up to? Look at him, Toba. All the other people I painted were living. But he's different. He's near death. He sees it. He's dying. I don't need to be told that. There are wonderful thoughts in his eyes. You madman. It won't take long. After I've fixed him up, he's going straight to hospital. But you know who he is, don't you? All the same, if he gets there soon, he might live. You might say his life is lost already. Of my concern. Patching up his body just so that he can be tried and then executed. I can't help what happens to him later. There's more to be considered than the body, Tober. That may be dying, but the soul is still alive. Tober, are you, are you going to operate? Bring the hot water, fetch a clean towel from the cupboard. Uh, and have you got the stuff that makes the smell in hospitals? Get those things. And uh, you'll keep out of the light, won't you, Tober? Why do you want to do this? Because, Tober, there's something to be said about him before he dies. And about all of us. I can see it. Take care. You might find something you don't understand. That'll frighten you. I understand what I see in him. What is it? It's the truth about us all. Is that all? He's doomed. So are we all. Is he really dying, Tober? We're all dying. But could you? Could you not fix him up so that he could walk home like... Of course, I'd see him safe along the road. Maybe I'd go with him. Shell, in my room there's some brandy. Bring it. Aye, that'll give him the strength. I'll see him downstairs. Hello, Fred. Oh, Father. 
father. I just wanted to have a few words with you. Uh, visits are upstairs. Do you mind coming into the vestry? Thank you. I know what you've come to talk about. Then you know it's a serious matter, Father. Johnny McQueen's doings. That, and because the woman Catherine Sullivan was seen entering your house. There's nothing against her, surely. In the eyes of the law, she's a dangerous woman. I've been listening to her. She's been asking you where to find Johnny McQueen. That's a crime? A serious one, Father. Tell me this. From your experience of men and women, would you say they're all bad? In my profession, Father, there is neither good nor bad. There is innocence and guilt. That's all. I've seen the bad in them, and we condemn that, and rightly, too. But what do we do when we find something that is good in them? Shouldn't we recognize that? I know what you're trying to tell me, Father. This woman loves McQueen. She can't find him, so she comes to you to ask you to help her to find him. Like all the people here, they expect me to do miracles. Father, I have my duty to do. Where is this man, McQueen? Out there somewhere amidst the stones of the city. Is that all you have to tell me, Father? You all come asking my assistance. But I wanted to see this man for a very good reason. Why? You might think this strange, but I wish I could have seen him before his arrest. I wanted so much to comfort him. That isn't unreasonable, Father. But you can't do that unless he's coming here. streets round here watched. And this time, Father, don't interfere. Oh, I, I wasn't interfering. I was only just wondering if there mightn't be a little mercy. I'm sorry, Father, but it's my duty to bring this man to justice. That's the duty of all of us. Father, it might be better if that young woman stayed here with you for a while. You understand. Good night. The young lady left a few minutes ago. She said she couldn't stay. Where did she go? She didn't say. It's time you were in bed, Father. Wait a little longer. It's only 11. Do you expect the tide to wait for him? It's trapping fast. By midnight, the ship will be grounded. He'll be at Father Tom's any minute now. If you get him here by midnight, I'll do what I can for you. But I can't do a thing after that. I'll get him before then. Great doctor, Tober. If only you'd finished your studies. You, you'd have had the top hat and fine clothes and a big house and the rich customers coming to you to be cured. And, and you wouldn't have to get out of bed until maybe 10 in the morning when the streets would be sort of aired. Easy now, easy. He's ready for hospital now. Look here. Give me a hand with him. He'd better rest a bit longer. You, you daren't move him yet. He must have a blood transfusion. What good will that do? You restore him and it might save his life. But he's not fit to be moved. You and your infernal paintings. Get him a brandy, can't Watch you? Him. You can have him there while the light dribbles out of him. The pot call and the kettle black. You fellas are not caring a pin about him. Yammering about his body and his soul. He has an immortal soul. He must go to a hospital. That's uncivilized. Make up your minds about him quick. I'm not going to stand any nonsense from, from you fellas. Do you think I dressed his wounds and got him comfortable just so that you could stand there and paint him? You only fixed him up so that when you get him to the hospital, you'll be proud of what you've done. You're drunk. Listen, if he dies... Give the police to do it in there. And what will we do with him if he does? What will we tell the police? Stop arguing. You've done what you wanted to do. Now let me. I will not allow him to sit there and die in that chair. You talk about his life. Aren't you telling me that you're going to hand him over to the guest? When he's fit, they'll pass him on to the police. The police will put him up for trial. I expect him to hide him. I kill you, he should stay here. Look at him, Tober. It won't take him much longer. Let him rest. He needs it. Can't 
Have you, have you ever heard tell Father Tom? Come on. No, leave him. Don't take him away until I've Father Tom. Listen, if he Those dies, he's for doing this. And what will we do with him if he does? What will we tell Where him? Where is he? Stop arguing. You've done what you wanted to do. Now let me. I will not allow him to sit there and die in that chair. You need to talk about his life. Aren't you telling me that you're going to hand him over to the police? Tell me, Father. Yeah, when he's like he used pass to tell the police. Maybe. And the police will put him up for trial. Don't expect me to hide him. I kill you, he should stay here. Louder, Father. Speak, Speak louder. I can't hear you. Let him rest. He needs it. Can't you see? What I see has life. Well, it belongs to him, not to you. Now, come on. No, leave him. Look. We've always drowned your voice with our shouting, haven't we, Father? We never really listened to you. We repeated the words without thinking what they meant. But I remember... When I was a boy, I remember when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, out of his mind. He's delirious. I'm going to fetch an ambulance. Well, Father Tom is waiting for you. And there's a young lady named Kathleen with him. Could you get as far as Father Tom's if I gave you a hand? <laughs> As I was saying, and this fella, he said to me, he said, if you bring the board round to me next week, says he, uh, Johnny, come on. Johnny, come on. Come on. It's all right, Johnny. Come on. It's all right.
Johnny, Johnny, listen to me. You stay here. I'll, I'll get past the police, and I'll, I'll bring Father Tony in. Stay there, Johnny. It's a hardy old night side. safe a wee bit back. But where? Oh, where? Yeah, just before the square. See, we couldn't get any further. Well, come on, take me oh, no, there. No, 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 Mr. the police, they're all around. Don't oh, wait. But you're looking to have to leave a message with Father Tom. Will you tell Father Tom we've gone to the square? Ah, oh, that's right. You're yeah. tell him. Stretch out your hand to mine. What you want with me? Go back to life and peace. I'll stay with you, my love. Hold up your head. Don't cry. That's our chance. Will you take it with me? Is it far? Keep hold of my hand. Father Tom, it means you came off. Where is she? The lace busted. She went on. Which way? I couldn't keep up with her, but we'll get her now. It's all right, Johnny. 
been here? Is it far? It's a long way, Johnny. But I'm coming with you. <sighs> We're going away together. Two shots fired. Yes, sir. That's when we had to fire back. 